And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, today we're taking a look at Last Spike. Now Last Spike is made from Columbia Games, and Columbia Games is mostly known for their block war games. These are war games where the, the figures are on blocks. Many times you don't know exactly what's on the blocks your opponent's fighting with, but you can see where the blocks are, and there's buff blocks and all that. And they have a very well-established reputation for making good solid war games and they've made some non-war games in the past but it's not common for them this is definitely a short sweet economic style game in which the theme of the game is players are building that line of railroads that connected the east coast to the west coast in the united states in the 1800s where they spiked in the golden spike in the middle and connected them this is like that, although think of this more as uh, investing in the cities and hoping that they will be on this very famous route. Let's take a look at the game. We'll start by taking a look here at the board which has Sacramento to St. Louis, which is where we're trying to connect the railroads to. And the game is going to end when there's a railroad connected somehow between those two cities. Now players are going to all start with a pile of cash, and the cash comes uh, in different discs here, which are 1, 5s, and 10s, which would be a little confusing, I think, but it is mentioned right here on the board. Now each tile that a player draws is going to show a coordinate on the board, so this is E3, it also has a cost to it, this one's 3000. So the E's are here between Dodge City and Denver, so E3 would go here. Now on a player's turn, they have to build a piece of track. Now when they build a piece of track, it has to start next to a city if possible, or connect to a piece of track. So I could not actually play that B3, that E3 tile because the E4 had not been built or the E1 and E2. So instead I decide to play the A4. Uh, I put this one here, I pay 5,000 to the bank for placing that, and then I can take or buy a city card. Now since I connect it to Omaha, I can take this card for free. There's a free card for each city. The first person to connect to those can take a card for free. And in fact, you cannot buy a card until someone has done that. Once that's been done, let's say I built somewhere else on the board, I could buy another Omaha card, but the next one will cost me 3,000, then 4,000, then 5,000, then six. Now why are you buying these cards? So here we are in the middle of a game. And you can see that W4, W3, and W1 is in place. When W2 is placed, paying $5,000, you place there. Now the connection is complete between Denver and Yuma. And both of those cities are going to score. So if I have three of the yellow cards, I'm going to get $18,000. And for Denver, let's say I have two of them, I'm going to get $10,000. And that's it. You get your money back, you know, getting more money like this. If you ever run out of money in your turn and you can't place track, then you got to sell off your lands that cost money, and you could be out of the game possibly, although I think you'd have to play pretty badly for that to happen. Now, each city can score more than once if the connections, like Denver could even score four times if all the connections are fin finished on it. But remember, as soon as players are done placing all the different tracks so that there's eventually an entire connection that connects Sacramento to St. Louis, then the game will immediately end. At that point, players will count up their money and whoever has the most wins. City cards you have mean nothing. And so you're going to be basically playing a tile on a turn, drawing a new one, and possibly buying a city card. Most money at the end wins. Now I have a soft spot in my heart for Columbia Games because they've done some really cool stuff over the years. They're this small independent company that does really cool neat things. And this is a really neat design. I will say that this design would have probably been neater had the component quality been slightly better. I'm not a huge fan of this slip cover for just the reason I'm trying to hold the box here and it keeps falling out. Um, but that's okay, the wooden blocks, 
And the stickers, you have to put the stickers on them. That's not bad, but they're really bland looking. And the board itself is very thin cardstock. The whole thing just isn't that good of quality, but it's very playable. And the game gives me a very strong sense of a very classic game from Sid Saxon called Acquire, which also had you drawing tiles and putting them on the board. This has some very interesting things behind it because you have four of these tiles in front of you. And there are some times where you'll see someone has maybe three cards for one city and you have one of the tiles that's going to connect the route to that city. So you're not going to play that because you're not going to let them score. And you really don't want to invest in any one city too much because if you do so, then the other players are going to make sure that that city won't score. Now, you can be assured that the cities in the end, Sacramento and St. Louis, they are going to score once for sure. While the cities in the middle, they could be skipped and bypassed. However, they also have the possibility to score more than twice. And Sacramento and St. Louis can only score twice. Uh, but some of the middle ones, three, and then and the very middle city can score four times. I really enjoy this back and forth, draw a tile, place again. Now the tiles have different costs on them, which is related to the terrain. There's the five and 6,000 tiles. I don't know if they're always worth putting out because no matter what the payouts, you're losing five to $6,000. It might be worth your while to put out a couple of the $1,000 tiles, which are cheaper because it is most money at the end of the game. And as the game board fills up, it's gonna take a while for any one route to score. So you gotta be careful, you don't wanna spend your money. Once the city start paying off, you got your money. So you don't wanna spend all your money. The game gives you enough money to start with. It's a different amount depending on the number of players. Uh, and one of the interesting things the game also does is it takes away a tile. When you're playing with two players, there's one tile out of the game. But still, you're never quite sure, have I drawn that tile I need? Or is Susan holding that tile? And I'm telling you, Susan's just trying to stop me from winning the game. So. Uh, maybe she has a tile, but I might be doing the same thing, but I might have tiles and say, look, I have to play one of these tiles and I can't even play these two because the, you know, they, they can't, they have to connect to a city or to a track connected to a city and that's not happening yet. And so do you play a tile to help somebody else out or do you play one that's expensive? These sound like really tough choices and they can be, but the game itself, we're talking a 45, maybe an hour you know, game, 45 minutes an hour game, and that's pretty solid. I think it works best with lower numbers of players. It's okay, two player, three and four. Once you go higher than that, there's, it's, it's, it's kind of chaotic. You're doing stuff and hoping things, hoping it comes back around the table, but it's still not a bad game. I was really surprised by this one, folks. I, I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't be because Columbia Games puts out solid quality games, but I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought it would be complex and it's not. It's very straightforward. It's a cool little economic game that I think a lot of people will like. That's Last Spike. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. 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 Yeah.